Hello. Today we'd like to talk about a situation that arises when facility managers upgrade their filtration and find that the configuration of their air handling equipment limits their filter options. This is Mark Davidson with Canfill. Today we'd like to talk to Canfill's Director of Distribution Sales, Joe Randolph. He's got some ideas about what some solutions are for this problem, which is a serious consideration when people are, again, looking to upgrade their filtration to mitigate their risk against COVID. So Joe, before we get started, take a moment and introduce us to yourself, would you? Hey, good morning, Mark. Thank you for uh, asking me to participate in this video. Uh, I'm the Director of National Distribution Sales for Camphill for the United States and Mexico and I have an extensive background in the HVAC industry. So between filtration and HVAC, I've been in the industry for 32 years. Thanks, Joe, appreciate that. So uh, here's the situation we wanna talk about today, and I've seen this countless times, and I'll bet you have too. You're on a rooftop, you're looking to uh, upgrade some filtration, you open the filter access panel, and inside the equipment, all you see are little two inch racks and their side access where you just slide in filters, but that limits you to two inch deep filters. That's the only options you have. I guess the first question is, and we'll get into what are some other solutions to that, but I guess the first question is, why do OEM equipment manufacturers construct their equipment like that? What's the reasoning behind that? Well, Mark, that's a great question. Typically the HVAC uh, manufacturer wants to maintain the integrity of the footprint, right? So the larger the footprint, the more expense uh, to the unit and the cost to the end user. So physically, uh, they wanna maintain a small footprint and then being why they wanna do that is because they want direct replacements. There's millions of these rooftop units out on retail and light commercial facilities and they wanna be able to, to maintain a competitive advantage in the marketplace so they can replace like for like without having to do a bunch of sheet metal adapters up on the roof. Okay, yeah, I, I, I've seen that. Now, something else that I see often is when you open some of these panels, you'll see a series of filters in a V shape. And so instead of seeing like two or three filters, and this would be in a slightly larger rooftop unit, but then you'll see a V shaped housing where you have filters set up in a V configuration, you may have six or eight rows across. Uh, what's the reasoning behind a, a, a V bank type filter configuration? Mark, the reasoning behind that V bank configuration because filters as we know are rated on CFM and then velocity foot per minute. And by being able to put in those filters in a V bank configuration, we can reach the rated velocity of the air through the system so we don't we can maintain the integrity of the filtration uh, through that system and then also they can they can have smaller duct openings and once again it gets back to that footprint of that that rooftop unit okay all right so if i had a thirty thousand cfm unit let's say and my unit then is is rated basically i need 15 filters to cover that 30,000 CFM, kind of what you were alluding to. So in, in an alternative to a V-Bank filter, if I wanted to, a V-Bank configuration, if I wanted to do something different, what would my options be? How do I do that? Mark, that's what we call a built up bank. And uh, that would be sort of like a wall on a building. And so it would be a flat wall and on 30,000 CFM, on a 24 inch by 24 inch filter, that is rated at 2000 CFM at 500 foot per minute. So if we take 30,000 CFM divided by 2000, we need 15 filters. So the configuration could be a couple different ones. We could have five filters high and three wide, or we could have three high and five wide. But to be able to maintain that uh, structure and specification of that the filter we need to be able to keep that at 500 foot per minute per filter okay is so is that a if i so if i had that unit and it was set up when the v and the v configuration and i had 15 filters in a relatively small area but i'm limited to two inch deep filters and i wanted to set up this this bank of filters like we we're talking about this flat bank 
Uh, what would, I mean, is that something that's easily doable? Can that be done with uh, engineering force uh, companies, mechanicals and things like that? Mark, what we do is we would put in a piece of hardware or a housing in the field and we would need some engineering to make sure that the structure, the load of the, the roof would be able to hold the additional weight, but also we'd need an HVAC mechanical contractor to do some transitions cutting into the ductwork and, and into the entrance of that return air of that HVAC equipment. But we see that happen quite frequently, and it's based on somebody that wants to be able to maintain a higher efficiency or better filter in their facility. So is it easy? Some cases it is, in some cases it gets very difficult, but we always say consult your HVAC mechanical contractor and your local mechanical engineer to ensure that, that you're capable of doing that with your facility and your rooftop unit. Okay, so it, it seems like then the decision process behind that might come down to your basic return on investment equation. So the, the value of having, of changing your unit around so you, you're not stuck with two inch tracks is you open up your selection of filters. So you can have a 12 inch, six inch deep 12 or 22 inch bag pocket type filter. So what's the value behind those bigger filters? I mean, what's wrong with only having a two inch filter, why go through all of this work and expense to give yourself the option to put in bigger filters? Well, Mark, you know, with the situation that we're in with the epidemic or pandemic that we have with COVID-19, indoor air quality and filtration has dramatically got the limelight with facility directors and end users that we didn't have in the past. And typically why we saw the limitations of a two or four inch track in, in a rooftop unit is really we were putting panel filters or pleated filters to protect the HVAC equipment alone. So the reason for an upgrade or looking at other options are that the fact that we know what the size of the particulate is for COVID or coronavirus, and, and we need to have a higher efficient filter in that system to be able to capture that, that virus or airborne nuclei to be able to help mitigate risk and protect the employees inside that building. Okay, so if we, if we, or if we go through this expense, put in this larger filter that's got more, um, a higher efficiency, because it's deeper and physically a larger filter with more media area, I assume then the service life of that filter could also be dramatically increased. And so there's some benefits to that too. So you're capturing the particles that you need to mitigate your risk with and you're extending your service life too. Is that true? That, that's very true. So, so basically there's a couple things that happen, uh, Mark, is A, as we go to a deeper filter or a higher MER value, minimum efficiency rating value, uh, that media gets thicker or uh, blanketed or lofted. And also it, it increases the static pressure or resistance in that, that rooftop unit. So we have to make sure that A, that, that HVAC system will be able to handle that additional static pressure to be able to move air through that building based on the design criteria. But also uh, we're adding and, and a high efficient filter, when we add a six or a 12 inch deep or a 22 inch bag, it's once again about that surface area. So we have more surface area and that surface area correlates with the, the life of that filter. For instance, a, you know, a regular two inch pleated filter, a MERV 8, 8A would have anywhere between 12 and 18 square foot of filtering material. But if we went to a 12 inch 4V uh, brand or type of filter, now we've increased that to 200 squ uh, square feet of filtering material and we're able to get longer life. But also by choosing the correct media, we're able to get higher efficiency and be able to capture those small particles or what we call sub-micron particles that are airborne. Okay, so that's, so when you, the totality of all that, when you put that all together, uh, if you invest 
the uh, the time and expense to expand your capabilities to put larger filters in your air handling units, you get longer service life, you get higher efficiency, lower pressure drops, which I assume also equates to some energy savings. And uh, the totality of that is probably a significant expense and offsets. Uh, again, it's a return on investment equation, so it probably offsets the expense in, in a matter of a year or so. That's probably the case. So, but let me ask you this, let's say, you're a, a retail store, a big box retailer, something like that. You may have 15, I've been on a lot of those roofs as I'm sure you have. They may have 20 um, small rooftop units that are uh, two inch tracks, maybe V-Bank configurations. And the expense to upgrade all of those would be enormous. So let's say you're in that situation and that's just out of the picture. You cannot afford to do that. All you have is a two inch filter. So let's go down that road a little bit. What are your options if all you have is a two inch and there's no way for you to change? What can you do to mitigate your risk against COVID? Mark, as I stated earlier, the two inch pleated product is really to protect the HVAC equipment, the evaporator coil, the blower motor and that, to really get into indoor air quality. There's a few options that we can really look at, but we're really limited in that application in the two inch. So we, we look at our products and, and ASHRAE came out with a new filtration and disinfection article, and you can find that on their website. But it also recommends a minimum of MERV 13. And they really were applicable, if you can get a MERV 14, that's their suggestion. But also in that document, it refers to a MERV A. So MERV A value is actually what the life efficiency expectancy is of that filter throughout the life. So what we really want to do is get choose a product that would be like a MERV 13 and a close to a MERV 13A to meet that CDC or ASHRAE recommendation. But we at Campfill, being the, the clean air solution providers, we really recommend a MERV 15 or a 15A product to mitigate risk and have the highest efficient capture rate in those submicron particles where, where we we're dealing with COVID or coronavirus, right? So the options really are, is we have products out there that are MERV 13 and they're a pleated filter and it uses what we call a coarse fiber synthetic product. And that synthetic product is electrostatic charge but the problem with that product is that that charge dissipates. And so that product would start out at a MERV 13 and based off our test reports, it would end up at a 9A, right? So, so we do have some products that, that you have to pay a little more upfront for the filter, but you're gonna get better filtration and you're gonna be closer to that MERV A, MERV, MERV A value. For instance, there's an OptiPak Durable. Uh, it comes in, different media selections. You can get it in a MERV 11, MERV 13, and a MERV 15. But the MERV 15 performance is a 14A performance. And if we look at a 14A performance, that actually meets the guidelines for a patient care room in a hospital. So that option's a great option. But the other option would be our MERV 13 product. Over that life or that span of that filter, it will drop one MERV rating it'll drop to a 12A. So the limited selection we really have is, is a little give and take. You're gonna to have to pay a little more upfront for your filters, but you're gonna protect your employees and the people that are occupying that building from that airborne particulate or that COVID-19. Okay, uh, thank you, Joe. There's, there's a lot there. And it's, it is a complicated topic when you get into that situation where you're you're limited to only a two inch filter. And I know that there are certain areas of the country and municipalities that have gone a little bit beyond the ASHRAE document that you were referring to. They actually have regulatory enforcement that says you must use a filter labeled as a MER 13. So I guess the last um, situation that could arise, let's say you're a smaller facility, maybe a family owned business, and you don't have the financial um, ability or your even equipment is even more limited and so putting in a a MERV 15 14a or 
or something like that, uh, as you were talking about, that will actually give you that high efficiency. But the operational cost of those filters is significant because the pressure drop is high, as you were alluding to before. So all you can afford to do is, is a lower cost filter. So are there any other options there where you have to have a MERV 13, or even if you don't have to have a MERV 13, you just can't afford it, but you just need a two inch filter. What other options exist? Are there anything out there for people that are not at spot? There is, Mark, and there's a product line that we call um, our City M and our CC 500. They're standalone air purifiers or standalone air cleaners. Uh, so they would be plug and play. You would put that uh, unit in a, in a conference room or a lobby or a room, a school um, where the teachers and kids are at. You would plug that into 115 volts and you would be able to, to provide clean air to that facility or that room. Uh, the great thing about that product is it by far exceeds the recommendations of CDC or ASHRAE uh, of that MERV 13 or 14, and it actually exceeds you know, our healthcare standards for patient rooms. Uh, it, it provides you HEPA filtration, and that's high efficiency particulate um, arrestor, and that's actually measured in efficiencies at a small submicron particle, 0.3 micron, and to be a HEPA filter, it would be 99.97% efficient. So those standalone units, you size those based on air changes, and you would calculate leg time width time height to get the cubic foot and divide it by 60 to find out how many air changes would be recommended. And, and basically, uh, the CDC and ASHRAE are recommending four to six air changes per hour. So based on the, the room size and what the capability of, of our city M or CC 500 would de determine how many you would, you would place in that room. Okay, th thank you, Joe. That's a lot of information. This is a complicated topic and it arises. I'm gonna guess, Joe, you get five phone calls a day about this, maybe more. I know I've heard from a lot of people, this is a serious issue when people uh, under the best of intentions, they try to upgrade their air filtration and then they find out they have some hard decisions to make. So Joe, we appreciate your, your background and your knowledge on this. This is very helpful. I would encourage anyone who has further questions to reach out and contact Joe. So Joe, again, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Mark, I really appreciate uh, your time this morning and asking me to participate in this education video. Have a great day.